Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You're sure you're going the right way, Claudia? Yep. And you won't tell me where we're going? Nope. How I let you inveigle me into this mysterious expedition, I'll never know. It was easy, Mama. I just asked you whether you wanted to come shopping with me. You said yes. We got into a bus. Here we are. That's just it. The last time you did this sort of thing, we ended up by buying a dog. Oh, we're not buying anything today, so cheer up. We're nearly there, too. Where? Where we're going. This conversation is beginning to sound familiar. From now on, I'll find out where we're going before I leave. Would you really like to know, Mama? No. Then I'll tell you. See, it all started when David brought home a doorknob last night. A doorknob? It was very attentive of him. Do you prefer doorknobs to candy or flowers these days? Oh, it wasn't for me. It was for a house he and Roger are building in Connecticut. Early American. I'm sure it's very nice, but I don't get the connection. You see, David wanted to be completely authentic about it in every detail. And... He knows this place where they have all sorts of old things, and, and he found just the right doorknob right there. Oh, an antique shop. Well, David calls it a junk shop. Mm, and that's where we're going now? Yep. I'm sorry I asked, because now I know. Haven't you got enough stuff in a furnished apartment as it is? Oh, this place has only good junk. Oh, such as doorknobs. Mm-hmm. I suppose you're planning to put one on every door in your apartment? <laughs> it's an idea. <laughs> David said he saw the most beautiful old dining table there who seats 40 people. That'd be a very handy thing to have around. You can never tell when 40 people might drop in to sit around the table. And chat. Listen, don't worry. I'm not going to buy anything, Mom. I just want to look around. Then you got me down here under false pretenses. You said we were going shopping. Window shopping. The windows will probably be very dusty. Look, there it is across the street. Where? Where the dusty windows are. It says the old curiosity shop. Are we going to cross over or shall we admire it from here? Oh, let's cross over. Not much traffic to look out for. It's a nice, quiet old street, isn't it? I'm always suspicious of little shops with dusty windows on quiet streets. I'm not. I like them. Hey, watch out for that piece of wood in the gutter. I see it. Oh, it's an awful-looking place, Claudia. Let's go home. Not when we're right at the door. No better time. Oh, Mama, you have no curiosity. Come on, come on. Well, it's just dusty enough to make me curious at that. Come on. Oh, look, it's just like another world in here. It's like a page out of Dickens. Mm, even smells like Dickens. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> hey, you're not catching cold, are you? No, it's only this dust. Well, see that it is. Oh, look at that old suit of armor in the corner. Yes, madam? Did you say something, Claudia? No, did you? Somebody said something. It was I, madam. I said yes. Where, where are you? Here, behind the suit of armor. Oh. I'm oiling it. The iron gets rusty in the hinges unless I take good care of it. Is there anything particular you wanted? No, thanks. Nothing in particular. Do you mind if we just look around? Oh, of course. It's nice to have someone in the shop besides Pedro. Who's Pedro? He's the suit of armor. I call him Pedro because he's Spanish. Pedro's been with me a long time now. He certainly looks very old. Oh, he is. He's 500 years old, to be exact. And uh, he'll be here long after we're all gone. That, that makes me feel chilly. Everything here has a story. Just so long as you love beautiful things, you don't have to buy anything. You can just look to your heart's content. Well, how nice. Thank you. I'll be here if you want me. Well, I hate to admit it, but I'm glad I came. Claudia, look. 
See that coffee cup over there on the table? The big one? Oh, brings back such memories. My grandfather always used to drink his coffee from a cup like that. I'm going to buy it. Oh, you are not a big cup like that? Oh, Mama. Say, look at that magnificent oak table. Oh, wouldn't David love that? No, I guess he wouldn't. Hey, Mama, look, right next to the desk up against the wall. See that? Just look. Oh, that, that chair is really very nice. Very nice. It's beautiful. I wonder how much it is. You came to window shop, remember, not to buy. Well, you wanted to buy that old cup. I am buying that old cup, if you please. And I'm buying the chair so we're square. But a cup doesn't take up any room. Where on earth would you put another chair in that apartment? Oh, someplace. Let's pull it out where it's light so we can get a good look at it. Oh, dear. What happened? It, it wasn't standing steady itself. Is there anything wrong? Well, I just wanted to look at this chair. I started moving it, and it came apart. Well, not everything here is in perfect repair. Everything is old, like me. Some things have stood up against time. Others have not. Uh, this chair you wanted to see, I'm afraid, is a casualty in our battle against time. <laughs> the leg in the back, you see it falls off. Could it be fixed? It could, by the right person. Then I think I'd like to buy it. Who could fix it for me, though? I could. It's a beautifully made chair. I bought it in Massachusetts. Someone who didn't understand how fine it was delivered it to me and was broken when it arrived. I decided to leave it the way it was, unless someone wanted it badly. There are a lot of broken chairs and broken dreams in this shop. But you said it could be fixed. The chair, I mean. A chair can be mended more easily than a dream. Don't you think you'd better find out how much it is, Claudia? How much is it? Prices? Oh, there are no prices here. I know someone really wants something. I let them have it at a price I think they can afford. Well, I can't afford a great deal, but I'd like to pay whatever you think it's worth. That's a good spirit. Many ladies don't always feel like that. Could you afford, uh, say, $30 if I repair the leg? Oh, yes. Claudia. Are you going to pay $30 for a broken chair? Oh, no matter how much you wanted it, it isn't worth it, really. Oh, but it's such a lovely chair, Mama. Wouldn't it be awful if you didn't like it? Do you think you could fix it and deliver it to me by... By five tonight. I live in the I'll city. I'll try. Will not be a very perfect job. It'll however. do. We'll have it fixed better later on when we get our own place. Oh, I'll write my name and address on this card. And oh yes, and 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 Mama wants that big cup and saucer. How much is it? That's not for sale. Oh, what a shame! But if you will accept it as a gift, it's yours. Well, thank you, but I couldn't accept. The pleasure it. is all mine, madam. The cup and the chair will be delivered by five. <laughs> Nice old man. He really kept his word. Oh, look, doesn't the chair look beautiful, Mama? Do you think David will like it, though? Oh, I mean, do you think he'll be disappointed in my taste for buying it? He'll be home soon, and you can find out. Mama, you know, this chair is, is, is just like my first cape. I fail to see the comparison, except that they were both pretty well smashed up. No, now be serious. It's like a milestone in our marriage. The first thing we really bought for our house with our own money. Something you bought with David's money, you mean? Same thing. Well, you know, that's a very good formula for a very happy marriage. There he is, there's David. I'd climb the highest mountain. If I knew that when I climbed that mountain, I'd find you and Mrs. Brown. <laughs> well, if it isn't a singing architect. A song with every house, and every house something to sing about. David, you fool. <laughs> Say, there's something in my eye. It's me. Oh, I didn't know it was you. You don't look like you. Who do I look like? Somebody nice? I'm not sure yet. Back up so I can see. Don't budge, Claudia. Now, what are you two hiding? Why are both of you standing in front of me like that? I'm just standing next to Mama. And I'm just standing next to Claudia. Well, now that our relative positions are established, how would you two like to let me into the living room? We can all sit down and make believe we're home. David, I bought something today. Again? Animal, vegetable, or mineral? It's not animal this time. It's wood. Salad bowl. 
Let's go into the living room. It's less drafty than this it, hall. It, it's not a salad bowl. Piano? No. No, the apartment's too small for a piano. It's not too small for a chair, though, is it, David? A chair? What kind of chair? An old one. A beautiful old oh, one. Oh, but we don't... You said it was an old one. I'll bet somebody passed it off on you as an antique. Where is it? In the living room. I've got to see this. Claudia, you don't know anything about oh, buying just a... wait. Please hold your horse until you see it. There. Is... Is that the chair? Yes, David. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but I... Don't like it? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This looks like... Oh, no, no, it can't be. Wait a minute. Let, let me turn it upside down. It is. Or if it isn't, it's the nearest thing to a duck and fife I've seen out of a museum. Lady, that's a chair that is a chair. How much was it? Don't tell me. I don't care. I knew you'd like it, David. I... Oh, I don't know why I should be so happy about it, but I am. And so am I. Hey, you know something? You're almost as good at picking chairs as you are at picking husbands and dogs. I guess it's safe to leave you two alone now. I'll say good night. Why don't you stay for dinner, Mother? You deserve it for having such an intelligent daughter. No, thanks. I've got dinner ready at home, and there are a lot of things I've got to do tonight. Can't you do it tomorrow? Because you've got such an intelligent daughter? No. Good night. Don't bother coming. I'll find my way out. Good night, Mother. Good night, Mama. Good night, children. Well, come here, you. Here I am. That was to let you know I still love you. And now, about that chair. I didn't want to say this in front of Mother, but... David, you don't like it? You bet I like it, but we can't afford a chair like that, Claudia. Must have cost at least a couple of hundred dollars, even in its rough state. Thirty. Two hundred and thirty dollars? That's a lot of money, Claudia. Not two hundred and thirty, David. Thirty. Thirty dollars for that chair? Who'd you hit on the head? No one. It was broken, but I wanted it anyway, so the man fixed it for me. He charged me thirty dollars. What man? The man in the old curiosity shop. Where you were yesterday. Don't you remember you told me about it last night? Oh, oh, Mr. Haynes, yes. He's a nice old chap. Some people think he's crazy. He must be to have sold you that for thirty dollars. He's not crazy, David. He just... Likes people who like nice things. You know something? I do, too. I guess that's why I like you so much. I guess we both got good taste, David. Look, isn't it beautiful there in the middle of the room? I, I wonder if it knows. Knows what? That it's the beginning of our home. <laughs> All story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. You know, American families enjoy doing things together. And the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola has a pleasant way of fitting in with all the family doings. Now that Coca-Cola is more plentiful, you can keep the refrigerator stocked with a good supply. And when you're round the town... Remember, you can stop at the familiar red cooler and get a frosty bottle of Coke and go on your way refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Mm -hmm.